let's face it, if you've been doing technology for a while, I certainly have, one of the things that we're constantly trying to do is drive down cost and increase, right, increase uh, functionality. And I think as an industry, we've done a pretty good job, almost looks like a Christmas tree, doesn't it? So uh, we want to increase our function or functionality, right? So how do we do this effectively within a cloud environment? Well, th that's a challenge, especially if you're looking at cloud environment from the perspective that you're just going to take your existing environment and just modify it to make it cloud-based. So let's talk a little bit about that and kind of start our conversation there, and then we'll build from there. So your current environment runs in a physical environment. So you have physical machines. Now, m many of you already are incorporating and have incorporated virtualization. So that means that we have multiple machines or virtual machines sitting on our physical machine. And we'll draw a smiley face just because, right? And so this is, this is wonderful. And we've got this and it's working. And what is this? This is a hypervisor. And the hypervisor allows us to run on top of it a network operating system. And from there, we deliver a service. And that service may be email, for example, or it may be you know, file sharing, or whatever it is. That's how that kind of all works, right? And so where is our primary cost? Our primary cost, of course, the operating system has a cost. But if it was a physical environment, just physical, we'd still have that. The hypervisor for many organizations is the cost. And so when we look at this as a primary cost area, and I think all of us would agree uh, that this is a primary cost area, how do we manage this cost more effectively? Well, many of us have said the, the, um, the hero here in this story, many of us are thinking that OpenStack is going to save the day. And I believe that OpenStack will help in management of our environments and be able to drive down costs for us. But let's look at this common variable again, which happens to be the hypervisor. Now, OpenStack environments typically use KVM. Now, there are two versions of KVM. There is the OpenStack version of KVM. And then there is a KVM called Rev, which is a KVM by Red Hat. So it's essentially a supported version of KVM. Both of them, though, uh, in an OpenStack environment, the hypervisor is KVM. So for those of you that are interested and concerned about security in your environments, especially those that are seeking federal security certificates, things of that nature, or you do not want to make major change to your environment, the first suggestion here, if you're going to OpenStack, is find a solution that leverages a hypervisor with KVM, because it makes sense. When you move to OpenStack, it's using the same hypervisor. Now, these share a lot of very similar traits, and we can go in on other videos on the difference between a Red Hat supported open source project and a um, just a pure open source project. But a lot of it has to do with stability and enterprise worthiness and things of that nature. So let's talk a little bit more about this model here that we've drawn about this hypervisor. The hypervisor, whoa, wrong way. The hypervisor is going to be, whoa, hey, that's kind of neat. The hypervisor is going to be your main cost variable. So we need to be aware of that. So what does OpenStack bring for us? So again, remember, we're going off of these two hypervisors here, and we're, we've kind of had this discussion that we want to do this. We want to lower our cost. So what does a hypervisor have to do with it? With OpenStack. So OpenStack provides a series of applications to perform certain duties within your environment. For example, 
you have um, management. So the management of the virtual environment, right, or the hypervisor is done by Nova. You have uh, image management, for example, the ISOs. This is things that when you provision, uh, they, they go up quickly, right? You can, hey, I can provision that server within a few minutes. All right, S many people use Glance for this. Uh, and I'm just list listing out a few of the components here. We have a storage, right? Many people want to do storage, primarily object storage with this one. So we're going to have Swift. And I think you get the, the, uh, the picture here, network. We're going to have uh, Neutron. So all of these are OpenStack components. So let's highlight the OpenStack components, just so we're all very clear. OpenStack equals, equals, right? OpenStack equals these components. Nova, Glance, Swift, Neutron. All of them put together in a stack make up a solution and often uh, make up a solution that we may refer to as cloud. So all of these make up a cloud and they have those, those main tenants that you would expect from a cloud environment, right? When we look at a cloud environment, we're looking for automation and management of the hypervisor. We're looking for rapid provisioning and deprovisioning. We're looking for storage, uh, some sort of storage as a service or storage virtualization. And we're looking for network virtualization and network management. All of these make up a cloud type of infrastructure. So hence, that's OpenStack. So let's go ahead and copy this real quick over to here. And then let's talk about where this danger is and how we need to make sure that we're preparing uh, to be um, very prepared for the future, right? So, excuse me, I'm kind of thinking and drawing at the same time. So that we're preparing for the future. So, here's what we need to remember. When we have an environment, these hypervisors here, this virtual machine is the hypervisor layer, right? And we'll just put it here, hypervisor. On top of the hypervisor, you have managers, okay? And so um, a manager actually manages the hypervisor nodes. And we're not going to get into these, but usually there's a management nodes and hypervisor nodes that are clustered. So in the Red Hat world, um, <coughs> let's just use Red Hat as an, <coughs> excuse me, as an example. This is called RevM, and this is called RevH. Okay, these are stateless compute nodes, and these are your manager nodes. Great. From that, those nodes then go down here and talk to the individual components that are doing things within the environment. And we talked about those. Those are listed here. So we'll just put them in here. Glance, Swift and, um, I don't know, um, Neutron. Now, notice I <coughs> only listed the three here at the bottom, but I didn't list management because we have management. So the first thing that we want to remember, the first thing that we want to remember here is can our environment manage these components? The answer is yes. In a Red Hat environment, not all environments do this, but the bigger question is, how do we make it a true OpenStack environment? To do that, we're going to manage these nodes with a manager. And that manager from OpenStack is going to be Nova. So here's, here's the key takeaway. We need to be able to have Nova manage those same nodes, those same cluster nodes, that same hypervisor has to be capable of being managed by Nova as well as by RevM. This gives us a gentle migration path or way forward. We do not want, remember here, right? We have them here. We do not want to have to change all of our core operating systems. 
which are managing our core applications. We want to try not to change this hypervisor. This is all, these are dependent on one another. We don't want to be changing this hypervisor to go to OpenStack. We're going to need to start that migration now. Moving into the KVM environment with having Nova as well as RevM both being able to manage the hypervisor gives us a gradual migration. So for example, we may run the environment at 95% RevM and 5% Nova because most of our applications aren't really prepared for OpenStack, but we have it here. And then over the course of time, you know, this will become 80%, you know, and this will become 20% and so on and so forth. The key takeaway here is the hypervisor itself, the hypervisor itself, very, very important, stays the same. We don't have to put another management layer in here. Some vendors, uh, some solutions will say, yeah, we can do that, but um, here with Nova, we're going to stick in our manager here. So you're going to basically call your manager from Nova and then call our proprietary manager, and then that's going to manage our hypervisor. We don't want that. That's not really OpenStack. That's just OpenStack on top of what we're currently running. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So we want to make sure that these hypervisors, and remember, there's a direct dependency to the applications and services that you are sharing, you know, your email and your file services directly relate to this hypervisor. So that's how, and I apologize for the length, how you can ultimately save money inside of a cloud infrastructure. And the way that we save that money is to manage our environments to the correct hypervisor.